semi-final one in the books. Time for semi-final two, and it is a doozy. Our first glimpse at Manchester United today, we saw Milan earlier take down Arsenal in unbelievable fashion, just as they did on match day seven. But now we get to talk a little bit about Manchester United, because as I said just then, didn't have the best results going into you know, this year, but went out in the off-season, got the players they wanted, Lotfi, Kilsu, Nexa, incredible talent, and they're starting to put it together now. Absolutely, and, and they really have evolved as time has gone on. I, 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 I harken back to match days where we, you know, we, we talk about the, the match day I think that really changed it was Manchester United versus Arsenal. That was that real turning point. After then, they went away. They worked on themselves. They worked on their mentality. And they worked on uh, almost the almost the psychological side of the game, which, as as we've seen, has proved complete dividends going forward. Because again, if they somehow manage to get through AC Milan, they have Bayern Munich who they are waiting for. Which, if you cast in mind back to match day seven, they took all nine points against. So if they can get a replicant of that, it'd be fantastic. But of course, they've got to get past AC Milan first that they do and we can talk a little bit about AC Milan in just a moment but first we can go over to the mix zone with Semra who has Roxa who knows firsthand exactly how good AC Milan are. Semra over to you. Thank you very much yes indeed he does unfortunately on the wrong side of what it is to play against AC Milan because five games in a row now across two different match days You've lost all five of them. What is it, do you think, about them that makes them such difficult opposition for us? Yeah, like you say, we lost uh, five games. We cannot say it's bad luck, it's a bad game or something like that. We must say that Milan was better. Like you say, five games. It's not one game. So five games and uh, Milan was better. <laughs> OK, it happens, right? I mean, that's part of the sport, isn't it? But on reflection now, over the whole season in its entirety, when you look back on these last five months and the work that Arsenal have done, because up until this point, it's really been quite quite good, hasn't it? It's all kind of come apart in these last two days. But overall, how would you rate this past season? Yeah, it was, uh, how to say, on the start of season, we was almost first or second all the season. We was, before uh, last match day, we was the first, uh, our Milan beat us three games. We lost that first position, but uh, like I say, after the fourth match day or something like that, I cannot remember. After one of our updates, Arsenal was not the same team. So we tried to, to learn to play with them and uh, to have another game style, but we didn't, didn't uh, do well and uh, we lost first position, lost second position. So we played the quarterfinals and the uh, season was over. Well, I know that it's still quite early and fresh because he's only, the season's only just ended for you, but looking back over the past season, is there any sort of analysis that you've done already to say, yeah, these are areas that we need to improve on for the next campaign, for the next time out, this is what we need to do a bit better, anything like that? Maybe we should have more patience when uh, we have the lead to play another game style because, for uh, example, uh, Jos today had lead 2-0, uh, me hit some some winning uh, games and uh, then lose points. So maybe to to try to to steal more times in, in the hold game. On to the lead or? Yeah, yeah. We trying to score the goal to play nice football, but in this league, in this moment, uh, the nice football is not so everybody want. They want to win, so let's try to to learn to win uh, with the, on a bad way. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about style, it's about substance, right? Okay, well, we've got a really interesting semi-final now between Manchester United and AC Milan. We obviously have Bayern Munich as the first finalist. How do you see the rest of the day playing out? Yeah, the, I want to congr congratulations to, to Bayern because they, they reached the final. They really deserved it. They, um, the day was amazing. And about the game in uh, Manchester Milan, uh, I will give a little advantage to, to Manchester United. But uh, like I say, Milan was really good and they deserve to be here, so it'll be a tough game. Let's see, maybe 2-1 <laughs> for Manchester. Okay, any final departing words for your fellow Gunners out there that are watching right now? Thanks for your support and sorry because we disappointed you, but we will try it next season to be much better. And I'm sure Go you will. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You and we'll see you soon. See you. All right, guys. Well, I think we are ready for that first game of the second semi-final to find out who will be joining the German outfits in the grand finale. So back over to you, Harry and Wes. 
Yes, thank you, Semra. Always keeping us on track here throughout these shows. Great to hear from Roxer as well. Sadly, the last time we'll be hearing from him this season, but no doubt he will be back. What did you take from that interview? Obviously, he's looking towards next season, trying to bounce back and get better performances, but focusing on this game in particular, he knows firsthand exactly how good AC Milan are. Anything given away there by Roxa? I think maybe. I think he certainly said that he'd give a slight edge to Manchester United there, but I think that's maybe more so on the playing staff that's in-game rather than the players on the consoles because I feel like they're they're very even at this point in terms of on the con on the actual sticks themselves. It's going to be a case of, of, as we said, it's execution under pressure. Can you bring your game and can you make your game plan work in pressure situations? And uh, again, as we've likened before, Nexa, Lotfi, kills you, all expert under pressure because they have been there and they have seen it and they have done it. They have won competitions. They have beaten big teams, taken big scalps. They have that in the locker. It's a case of whether they can put that to good use against AC Milan. Of course, AC Milan, they just want the story to roll on. It was always... A, f a fantastic and fascinating listen to Cicinho when he speaks to you after the games and figuring out exactly where their mental is. Obviously, would have been over the moon with the performance in the quarterfinal, but to hear him say, we, yeah, we want the miracle to continue. We want the story to continue. They have a really good chance here. They're in the final, I was about to say the final four. We're down to three now as the victor of this semi-final will join Bayern München for a chance to lift that trophy. And I wonder whether or not there's just a set game plan here for AC Milan because just as they did in the quarterfinal, it's Franquinho out first. Yeah, a little bit of continuity from AC Milan, which is, is what you need. But of course, it's the story of the young guns. I mean, as much as we say Nexus is experienced and he knows his way around the game, He's still a young pup by many people's, you know, by many people's yardsticks. Of course, Franquinho, one of the youngest in the competition as well. So, you know, maybe that kind of youthful exuberance will prove to give us probably a, a game of the day contendo. At least we very much hope so. Of course, the two clubs participating in the competition this season. We've got their banners hanging from the coffers here but our attentions turn to our two competitors on the stage. Nexa up against Franquinho. Looking at Nexa's form, and, and I think after the end of the season, Wes, you and I were both pleasantly surprised by how many points Nexa actually was able to pick up throughout the season. He went very much under the radar, but ended the regular season on a four-match win streak, four wins in a row. Went about his business. He recovered well from, it, as we said, the, the kind of the epicenter, or at least the epicenter of this change within Manchester United was that game against Arsenal. He recovered very well afterwards and, and got himself into form. They, I remember vividly, they bounced back the match day after very quickly and were able to kind of establish some rhythm. And that's where they landed themselves in second place at the very tail end of the, the regular season. Um, and he's a big he's a big part of that performance. Uh, as you know, as we said, you know, looking at him, he really is their go-to guy at the moment. He is 16 points he was able to accrue across the seven match days, picking up a goal of the day award back on match day two with his 3-1 win against AC Milan actually. So Nexa has had joy in this particular matchup. Back on match day two, a 3-1 scoreline saw him win over Sassinho, his opponent this time around. Franquinho, fellow goal of the match day winner on match day seven. One of the goals that helped them secure their spot in the knockout stages. We'll see if their knockout stage journey will continue here. It is Manchester United versus AC Milan. E-Football Championship Pro 2023 semi-final number two. We're underway. And it's Milan attacking left to right. They've had joy already in the quarterfinals. United have been sitting, waiting, watching. They'll be hoping they don't 
suffer the same pitfalls that their other auto semi-finalists Barcelona did as we just saw against Bayern well certainly something could be said for about having the, the hot hands certainly if you have that already kind of touched the stage you've already been up there you kind of know what it, what it is you've already had that adrenaline spike so you already know what to handle so it's going to be a case of whether Manchester United can again ride that wave of momentum and, and, and kind of take that adrenaline and, and harness it into good use Milan coming forward as Franquinho looks to introduce himself to the semi-finals Rebic was there queuing up still alive here for Rebic and Milan score first Milan won United nil the Milanese momentum just keeps going it's like a snowball running down a hill at the moment they are just putting their best foot forward here. They have every piece of momentum. It's, it's a great block. But AC Milan are the first to react. And again, you'll see there, it's a really good block from Lindelof. Where Rigi gets back up and then Rebic slams it home. And Franquinho, again, the man of the hour for AC Milan. He's already won an MVP in the eFootball Coppa Italia. He may just be winning finals MVP as well if he keeps this up that well, was an interesting point you raised because not only did he win MVP of that competition Wes AC Milan lifted the trophy at the end of it and to start off this semi-final Franquinho has put them in a very good position indeed and he's not done yet De Ketelaer might just go for goal where's that bouncing out for a corner Great play again from Franquinho just to build that up. It's a good block there from, I believe that was Lissandro Martinez. Had to be made. Here's the following corner. Lindelof clear. Maybe it's too early to ask this question, Wes, but at what point do we start putting respect on the names of Naples, Franquinho, Sassino after what they were able to achieve in the E Euros and the Coppa E Football Italia if they were to go on and potentially book a final spot here I think that silence is a lot of critics uh, in and of itself if they can get that achieved because they've certainly been well worth it we've said a lot that they have normally posed more questions what than answers and answers doubling the lead Unbelievable, Milan 2, United nil here in game one. And a sweet home by Divock Origi, neat double touch to home that lane. Tenali with the first time pass, Origi slots it home for 2-0. And as I was just saying, we had criticised them for asking or giving us more questions than answers. I think they're finally tipped the scales back in favour of giving us all the answers we could ever ask for. Two goals up here. Well, Franquinho wants that conversation brought forward now about putting respect on Milan's name. 2-0 in 20 minutes against Nexa, who has not suffered a loss since match day three, which was a long, long time ago. First real chance to come forward here with the United as well as Rashford challenges Kalulu. Fred Martial dispossessed by Kier. Savic a nice header down to Martial. Can he get it under his spell? The Milanese defence definitely shines because of one man, Simon Kier. You'll see him time and time again at the back beat. A valuable asset to them. That's a dangerous ball. Handled coolly in the end by Nexa. Still time here for United to 
get ourselves back into the game here. Still in the first half, still got plenty of real estate and plenty of time to work with here. Oh, and Rashford's been the benefactor there. Takes a strike and Magnan deals with the first attempt. The defence blocks the second. Some reactionary strike. Don't get next to that. Ball to, it. to Rashford. Oh, Manuel save. Goes the wrong side. Mine with a huge save and Franquinho reading where that ball was going. It's exactly the man you'd want the chance to fall to. But as you said, picks the wrong side. The read from Franquinho was perfect to deny that United goal. It should have been a goal. Yeah, it's a big opportunity for United to get back into the game. Ten to go till half. Corner swung in. Danger cleared and. A reminder if you're just joining us, the knockout stages are approaching the climax with this second semi-final. We're in best of three game territory here. Sabitzer with the dummy. Tomori, will he get there to prevent the corner? He will. A date with Bayern Munich. Is the reward for one of these two clubs. Bruno Fernandes, Simon Kier, call as you like. It's another mistake up top though for Milan and that's going to allow so many red shirts to go forward. Here is Fred, still alive here for Fred. Just as that Rashford chance moments previous landed to the exact man you wanted it to. Well, to fill in the rest after that Fred chance. Martial. Two minutes added on here in the first half. Benacer will take this over the halfway line and I think this will be the final attack of the half. Shaw deals with it and it is AC Milan 2. Manchester United nil at the end of the first half. Not for the lack of trying from Nexa. Five shots. Four on target. Magnan and Franquinho's manual saving has been spot on here. Second half underway. second half that is pretty big in the context of this best of three if Milan can hold on they'll be in prime position with one foot in the final Leal near side trying to get to the byline here but Martinez defensively absolutely astute he's going to calm himself down next to here Oh, De Ketelaire has been slid through. Shaw has to stick a foot in. He's got to calm himself down a bit. It'll be a Milan corner. Tonali to take. Shaw heads it back, but Tamori's keeping it alive. And De Ketelaire, oh, where's that going? Over the bar. Franquinho just going about his business. He's not worried about anything else that's happening on that stage. He's only concerned with what is in between his hands right now. Savica, Martial, Fernandez. That back line, Kalulu, Fernandez. Kier, you've got Tim Mori back there. It's one of the reasons that Milan are so difficult to break down when you do get the ball, whereas it's a very difficult conundrum to get to the bottom of Martial 
Rashford inside, Martial trying to carry it through. Tamori away. And slid in Liao here as he stayed on side. It's essentially a one on one. Varane for company! Milan three! United nil! The miracle continues, Wes! They just won't be stopped. They can't be stopped. The way that they are performing is at a level that I don't think anybody expected here. And again, sometimes knockout football suits certain teams. We spoke about Roma earlier on about how difficult they are to play against. This is a different breed in terms of how quickly they can move on the counter and how quickly and how clinically they can finish off the game. It's brilliant running from Rafael Leo. It's one flick down from Divock Origi. I think it was De Catalea with the through ball. And once a big time Rafael Leo is in on goal, it is very hard to stop him. Well, Milan fans might be asking why it took so long to introduce Franquinho into this squad because since joining on match day six, he's been undefeated, helped secure the knockout stage, has got them to this semi final. Now, 3 0 up with this amount of time left. We're halfway through the second half, there or thereabouts. Franquinho is looking like a, a hidden gem here for Milan. Difference maker is what he is. He is that and then some. He has changed the fortunes, not just single handedly, but he certainly changed the fortunes in terms of giving AC Milan a boost. Cecinio and Naples, and this is no disrespect to Kilito either, by the way. But there is a difference in looking at a cross and looking at Franquinho, who is picking up points and picking up momentum. And then saying, well, hey, actually, why are you doing this different than what we're doing? And then employing what you are carrying out. Because the way he's playing at the moment, it's, it's beyond his years in terms of maturity. Milan 3, United nil. Here in game one, Savitzer trying to slide in, Martial is dragged wide and just about sums up Nexus game thus far. And with this amount of time left on the clock at 2-0, you're thinking, yeah, OK, we saw how close the Palmer came in the other semi-final to maybe dragging himself back into it. But at 3-0, to get three goals before... The opposition defence just sets up and prevents any further attacks. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do at this level. Got to find your shooting boots here soon. If there's a time to find your form, now was the time for AC Milan. We've been saying it already today about finding form at the right time. My word has Franquinho found it. Sabitzer, Rashford. Tomori stepping in again. Next are just outside the top 10 goal scorers, but has yet to find the back of the net here in the knockout stages. It's been difficult for him. Here's Christian Eriksen just dwelling on the ball. That low block is everything to AC Milan currently. That it is, and you might be surprised to see Franquinho down there in 24th, but remember, only joined on match day six, so that is only two match days worth of goals, and those three goals were a return of four points for AC Milan. So a very good return on your investment. Some big, big performances from Manchester United here. Feel like this game may be just slightly out of reach now for Nexa. Ericsson through to Rashford. Magnan is cleared it off of Rashford, so not even a corner for United's efforts. And unfortunately, you you see Nex are animated, he's frustrated with himself. And we saw that earlier in the season when United were almost capitulating. 
It was a very, very similar story where the emotions were clear for all to see. And you kind of hope that Kielzu and Lotfi are not going to be too much affected by this result. They will know what they need to do in games perspective of two and three. But for right now, the story here is all about Franquinho. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful find to Origi. Stunning strike as well. And Diaz, oh! Could have been four. Had all the time in the world after being slid in to queue up the stunning strike that almost took De Gea's hand off in truth. And that's the smile of a man who knows his job is done. It'll be another corner following that one, but Milan, AC Milan, in the eFootball Championship Pro semi-finals are about to go one game up in a best of three. A reminder, this was a Milan team that on match day seven needed nine points of nine just to qualify for this stage of the competition. Now they find themselves one game away from the final. Double touch from Benesset. This one's a formality. The referee makes it official. And Franquinho, in 3-0 fashion, puts AC Milan on match point. Advantage Milan. Very much is so at this point in time. Three goals to nil. It was as comprehensive as, it, as you would see. Not that many chances for AC Milan. It all started, it was a really good read from Nexa reactions of AC Milan who got back to their feet quick enough and Rebic found the scoring in the opening eight minutes of the game and then it was all Franquinho we'll see the replays here clinical really really clinical from Franquinho and it'll be interesting to see who comes out first following that performance because as we saw in the quarterfinal Franquinho was out first then I wonder whether or not they're going to stick to the same formula that's gotten them to this point and if it's true then it'll be Naples up next well if they don't blink and they just say look we'll play how we want to play then we will, that's what we'll see I see all of that noise is not us whooping or hollering when the goals go in. That's your uh, your attendees in the VIP area who are vastly and vastly interested in this game. Well, the formula is being stuck to by AC Milan here. They are going to field the same players in the same order they did in the quarterfinal. A quarterfinal they won, by the way, two games to nil. So up steps kills you for Manchester United to go up against Naples of Milan. Kills you well versed in this competition. Naples has been off and around and winning competitions left and right outside of this one. This one's a juicy one. It very much is. And again, in the in the confines of what it means to Manchester United, they need this result. They need it. And they need it more than any other result that they have had so far this season. Of course, on the other side of the fence, I mean, you look at the the abilities that are on show here in terms of the players' capabilities. You've got a lot of powerful players there, and we have seen Naples already be proficient. And it may have taken him to a penalty shootout, he got it across the line. Well, the players have taken no time at all to get us ready and into game two of semi-final two. A reminder, Bayern Munich awaits the victor of this semi-final. 
United versus Milan. Kills you versus Naples. Strap yourselves in. Because we need a winner. Something tells me these are going to go blow for blow here. Tenali, Giroud around the corner, Liao early on here for Milan. Kier stepping in. Liao off to Benesser. Brahim Diaz has had his pocket picked there. Liao, Giroud. Back to Liao, off to Diaz. Lindelof is there, wrestles him to the ground, but the referee says ball first. Of course, this is Kilsu, who's won match balls from this competition. I remember his debut season way back when, I think it was 2019 for. Ace Monaco taking home a match ball for four goals in a co-op game. I'll come back to that as Liao maybe can try and open the scoring. 15 gone. Kills you has been there, done that in this competition. He still has youth on his side as well. But although he has the youth, Wes, he's going to have to dip into that wealth of experience in this type of knockout game. Yeah, he's going to need everything here. He's going to need every ounce of experience that is at his disposal because he's going to need the victory here. There is no other way to cut this. Manchester United need a victory. Fred. Martial through! And that's United's opening goal here. Their first goal of the knockout stages comes from Martial disguise the ball and he disguised the pass rather than what we've seen already today where it's a pass out and then it's a it's a you know a lofty through ball over the top instead the infield to Marcy out swept home and it is a goal ahead for kills you it's a great find and it's tonic for the wounds of United after game one just disguise the ball enough. He made a dummy runner almost and then instead waited for that movement from Martial. He found the back of the net. 1-0 United. Kills you starting to build here for what would have been a second. But United fans won't want reminding that Naples, of course, in the quarterfinals, went 2 0 down. Was able to come back against the Dominator. Raheem Diaz, Rebic controls it nicely. Is Giroud there and is he alert to it? Varan with the recovery. Uh, back to Liao now. Good defensive work from Kilsu. Ball finds itself in the hands of David De Gea and now United. They could think about maybe going forward since scoring the goal. It's mostly been Milan on the charge. Benazir. Giroud looking for Rebic on the far side. Shaw for company. Diaz on the overlap. And it goes for a goal! And there is your equaliser. <laughs> Milan just do not give up in this competition. United won. AC Milan won. Naples on the board. Back in the game. Yeah, it's uh, operating on instinct again here. You'll see the ball come in here. Instead of just making any kind of movement, instead just hits it as near post as you'd like. You'll see it again here, and hopefully it'll cut to a better angle. 
He just goes near post, just strikes the ball. Day is beaten near post. Brilliant finish from Naples and parity restored. We're underway following the goal. Under 10 minutes till half time. Fred in the Milan area now to the byline. Cuts it back. Great footwork. And Brilliant back footwork. In the lead is kills you. To the byline. We've seen that plenty of times. And United back in the lead now. Brilliant dribbling skill there from Kilsu to find that opportunity to keep yourself in bounds, as it were. After 37 minutes is it's great to see. You'll see it again. Eight. Just finds the gap and there's an angle. And it's it's actually been accredited to Bruno Fernandes. You'll watch it back here again. It takes a, a wicked cannon. It's Marshy out. Bruno does not have any idea about what's going on there. And it's like we said before, it won't matter how it gets across the line, it's how it gets there, or it's the fact that it gets across the line is the important bit. So it's as you were then. After the Milan goal, they have to start again. Excellent response from Kilsu. The Frenchman again just dipping into that bit of experience. Able to bounce back and once more puts Milan on the back foot. Long ball looking for Liao and he might just get there as well. He's through one on one! Never count out Milan! You just cannot... You can't do it, Wes. <laughs> it's just, it's like watching the zombie movie and, and just they just keep coming back for more. AC Milan, again, they just will not be denied. Yeah, There's not been a, a club really since match day seven that's been able to break clear of AC Milan. And this long ball looking for Liao on the break has the pace has the strength and most importantly Wes has the finishing to tuck it home clinical from Naples yeah you can see that big smile from Cecilio they know what he means to them and as he said anything from here if that if if the expectation is is just keep the fairy tale going they're playing with no fear they're playing with no expectation so Again, you'd feel like almost the pressure is all on Manchester United here. Well, it is in more ways than one. Fred with the long ball over the top to Sabitzer, but that one will trickle out. And one of the reasons it's so delicately poised for United is because of that game one result you see at the top of your screens. It means that Milan are on match points here in game two and game three if needed. We're at half time now. United to AC2. Yeah, what a big 45 virtual minutes this is gonna be. We're underway. The land's kick off. Kilsu coming forward. Sabitzer giving Rashford something to chase, but dealt with by Tamori. And the land break doesn't work out in their favour, and now Sabitzer for United finds What's Bruno Fernandes. Oh, it's off the back of Banyan, and finally into his hands. What a find that was. Oh, it didn't end up in the back of the net after all of that. Pinball is what that was. As soon as I hit the post, it was all pinball. The 
Milanese miracles just keep on coming, Wes. If this were real life, you would suggest that the name Whoa, is already on the trophy. Leal through! Oh, oh what a save. Much-needed save from De Gea. Yeah, it's a big save that was needed there as well. Went near post. De Gea had a good sight of it. Now, finally, following the commotion, changes are afoot. Substitution in progress. Here comes the corner, following that David De Gea save. Milan in the ascendancy, just not letting go. Here is that corner, Giroud, and Rebic, oh, off of the line, there or thereabouts. Three really good chances up both ends of the pitch, and Marcel Savitzer on the right-hand side, can't beat the first man. The attendance for this match was 71,898. One hour gone. Fred to Rashford. Giroud heads it on. Rebic has something to maybe knock on, but United defend well. Fred near side. Rashford inside the box. Turns really well. Two men for company, though. One of them was Kier, the other... Tomori. Now Milan's turn to try and come forward. Benesser with the cross. Can't beat the defender, Tenali. To bring it out again, but United's press is difficult to beat. To Ketelet. Men been committed here, which is allowed Rashford space on the near side. Fred trying to play that one to end to end stuff here in semi final number two. United's tournament lives hanging on the result of this game. game to go and United are building Sabitzer dispossessed by Tonali if ever there was a time to strike now is it for either team Sabitzer oh they can't get a foot to that one luckily Manjan is out swiftly Quite last chance saloon here is, of course, the score 2-2, but if there's a time to score, as you say, Wes, it's likely going to be the winner. Giroud back to De Ketelaer, Revic on the turn. Look at this United press, by the way, suffocating. And could pay dividends. Revic has the man on the near side, should he want him? Revic was the man who locked onto it, not sure it was the intended recipient. Bitzer heads it on. Fred. Rashford back to him. Rapidly approaching the 90th minute. United 2, Milan 2. No minutes added on, so this will be no doubt the last. 
attack of regular time. We are headed to extra time. They couldn't be separated throughout the 90. We're going to an extra 30. And if not, Wes, penalties are up next. And we know how quickly these extra time periods go. We know how quickly they can get away from the team. Something both players are going to need to take into account here. You can just see from the body language of Manchester United after the result in game one going AC Milan's way, how important they know this next period of play is. They did so well to finish the regular season Volunteers in the top two. Block. And looking at this side of the tree, looking at this side of the bracket, I, f I fancied United with the best chance of getting to that final. But AC Milan, I don't think anyone anticipated Number them turning up in the fashion they did here today. Bridge. We're underway in extra time. Number That's eight. what we say. It's that, it's that decision. Not even a decision, but it's the impact Number of 11. already having a game on stage, already having something that you've already tasted this environment you've already tasted this pressure coming into today he certainly would have suggested that the hot hands would have been the better situation to be in and as it's proving currently it is there but here comes Jaden Sancho he's fresh on the pitch as well came on here in extra time tries to turn inside Savitzer into the box and pushed out for a corner Encouraging signs for United. As Kills who starts to find his feet with both Sabitzer and Sancho. Good footwork from Sancho. And now it's coming a long way for this one. And he misses it. Kalulu though. He is the danger only as far as short. Sancho, Sabitzer, McTominay. Perhaps tried to do too much there. But it's been a first period that's been all Manchester United. Only five minutes of it remain. Rebic though sticks an important foot in. And might just give a chance to spring an attack, but again, kills you into sets. And there's space behind here. Sabitzer to Sancho. Tonali. The Milan press just as good as United's in that second half. Jaden Sancho, Rashford. Final attack of the period, if he can get one off. Tomori, though, what a recovery. And the referee has seen enough. Extra time one is done. It's so delicate. It is so delicate between these two teams. It's been a very very long day United have had to wait to play their semi-final AC they've had their nose to the grindstone battling through that quarter-final What an important 15 minutes this could be. Substitution. If we're still even at the end of it. It's penalties we go. No stranger to penalties is Naples. I saw him in the quarter-final go that way. By the very same scoreline as well. 
bested in Dominator 5-4 on penalties earlier in the day. Liao, far side. Great defensive challenge there. All the way back to Manya. Headed on by Giroud. Five minutes to go in extra time, number two. Five minutes to find a winner. Just seem to be cancelling each other out here. This one will trickle through for a United throw in the final third. It's not long left here. Got to make it pay from this position. Anthony has a defender to wrestle with. Since the equaliser, it seems to be very cagey. And oh, Rashford through here to maybe win it! It's an explosion from United! Because surely it's the goal that forces a game three. Saves them from the potential of penalties. United 3, Milan 2, Naples was so close, but kills you. Comes through in the clutch here. I know we've said it before, but kills you by name, kills you by nature. At the very last moment, finds a brilliant through ball to Marcus Rashford, slams it home, and you saw the explosion of joy. As much as that looks aggressive, I will tell you for nothing, that is joy from those three individuals. They are delighted to have the lead, but, and I say this is a but, there is still time on the clock, and it is an AC Milan kickoff. I think we have around two or three in game minutes remaining, plus whatever the assistant adds on. who just needs to hold and we'll be going to game three just as we did in semi-final one and there you go no minutes added on and we will see a game three here Manchester United stay alive for Milan and a quick reminder it's one today, more game for a chance at the trophy. Bayern Munich wait in the final. Up steps Sassino. And no doubt it will be, yes, Lotfi for United. I'll give you something to maybe chew on and maybe analyse at home. We talked about hot hands. Sassino didn't play in the quarterfinals. So that is pretty much null and void as an advantage now because Lotfi has played the same amount of games as Sassino has today and they're going into a crunch game. They are going into the crunchiest of games. A win here, and you are through to play FC Bayern Munich in the final. Well, we saw some bangers in that game too. That one from Diaz was the equaliser, the first of two. But it was always kills you. Creeping forward, always the one to game leads and it was Naples trying to climb back into it so in the end you'd say yeah kills you a worthy winner having taken the lead three different times finally pushing us to game number three and it's a cruel cruel way to lose if you're Naples it's now out of your hands it's all up to your teammate you got to sit back and hope that they can bail you out now. Of course, that was the second equaliser from Real. That long ball. Now 
Hart's pace was just inviting him to run onto it. And then this 119th minute eventual winner from Marcus Rashford. It's the resiliency of them. Uh, and I know we've mentioned that quite a fair bit in terms of over their progress over this season, but it really has become the staple of their gameplay now is there's no longer that kind of uh, I don't like to use this word when I talk about eSport players but there's no longer that fragility of oh, if things go against them then they're all going to get down they're all going to beat each other up and you know they're going to beat themselves up about how things are going instead they're like no okay that's been and gone we'll box that off we'll, we'll go again and, and that is typified by that there because you can see Kills was disappointed to get into, into extra time the fact that he's then came away with a 119th minute winner Again, just shows you that, that mental strength that seems to just be growing with every single game they play. It's the beauty of knockout football. That extra time winner from Kills You sees us run it back here in game three. Milan thought they had taking it all the way to penalties but it was kills you who says no and now Lotfi has Sassino between him and a place in the final big game here massive goes massive. without saying big yeah, game. It, yeah I was going to say we, we there's only so many adjectives we can find to describe this game and how important it is to both of these teams Sometimes you just have to let the picture say say what they need to say here because Be because it's such a big game you almost want to throw form book out the window but for those who are interested of course Cecino six points throughout the season did have a difficult time back on match day six with the infringement of the rules should have had maybe an extra three points on top of those six he, he garnered but because he was guilty of infringing the match team strength limit then against Stifler. What was a 1-0 win turned into a default 3-0 loss. So just six points for Cicinho. You look at Lotfi's form, nine points and undefeated since match day three. So Lotfi really has come to the boil at the perfect time for United. And if you do cast your minds back to the regular season, in terms of these two teams meeting each other, Carito walked away with a draw against Lotfi, and Cecilia walked away with a 3-1 loss against Nexa. So whether you want to read anything into that or not, obviously that is your prerogative, but certainly these two will be looking to improve on their results. We've been around a little while, as we know at this point, the throw form book out the window doesn't really matter because it all comes down to this 90 or 120 minutes to decide who has a date with Destiny and Bayern Munich in the eFootball Championship Pro 2023 final coming later today after this. It's been a long day, it's been a very long day. We've, seen, we've seen a lot of these, these two, these all of these players that are here today. We have seen a lot of them. Of course, wherever you're watching in the world, thank you so much for tuning in, our friends all across the world. It is almost time to crown a champion, but first we have 90 or 120 or penalties separating Lotfi and Sassino from misery or glory. Here's how we got here. Of course, Manchester United didn't have to play the quarterfinals thanks to their second place finish in the season across seven match days. Played incredibly well. But Milan, they came through an Arsenal team that looked really, really good. Top of the table going into the final match day. Milan bested them then. They did it again in the first two games. And all of the clubs in this competition have been fighting all season long for that, that trophy you see on your screens. I hate to ask you, Wes, but which way is this going? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? 
Uh, I will try and look into my crystal ball, but I, 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 at this point in time, I can all I can see is static. Uh, no, I'm not getting anything from this. I think uh, first goal uh, again. We talk about cliches within within esports and with, within football. First goal is vital. It sets the tone. It will kind of maybe give us an idea as to where this gameplay is going to be. If Lotfi can come out of the traps quickly and kind of dismantle Cecinio, great. But also, we've seen some incredible goals from Cecinio over the course of this season. Yeah, it's 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 very, very 50-50 at this moment in time. I think, again, given momentum of what happened in the previous game, you'd say maybe Manchester United might be slight favourites here. But as we've said, you can't count out AC Milan at any point in time. I said throw form book out the window and I still am doing that. But I will say that this AC Milan team seems to have gotten the virtual players down to a tee in the second half of the season. And when you look at Cicinho's results, he had several, several close games not go his way. 3-2 losses, 3-4 losses. Difficult to stomach those ones when they don't go your way. But it all comes down to this 90 minutes of a football extra time and penalties if we need them but game three is underway and martial is offside to start us yeah well you talk about that change of almost in fortune and in form you've also got to talk a little bit about the the newer players that they've actually have at their disposal obviously the big times that were available to all the teams in the competition You've also then got a maybe Castro Olivier Giroud's player with a weak card. There's other things that have kind of crept in. Um, of course, the volume players that we saw all out the course of this competition, Antti Rebic has kind of came in and, and really gave them some different options, uh, at least give them some different levels of players to work with. My question is, who's going to step up when the lights are the brightest as they are now two men taking centre stage of course Lotfeet for United Sassino for Milan Diaz around the corner Origi back to Diaz long ball to Benacer as well Varane with the intervention will force a corner Diaz is corner towards Kiel! Ooh, half the ground thought that was in. Had everyone fooled. The oh, that's so header. close. Oh, just a bit of accuracy. and No doubt we're looking at our opener. Manchester United will be very happy to see that one sail past the post. That they will. What a job by kills you in game two after seeing how game one went in commanding Milanese fashion to steady the nerve and get that goal in the 119th minute to take us to this point. Lovely half switch of the play there to Revic. Round the corner as well to Liao. And Lindelof fastest to react Origi Rebic Origi again oh. forced to save that's two really good chances in the opening 20 minutes for Cicinho Here comes Lotfi. Fred out to Bruno Fernandes. Stayed on side. Kalulu's defensive capabilities too strong. Martial, oh that's a mistake, oh. but so it's uh, animation lets him down. 
I think it was more so he was looking for a side-by-side -side shoulder charge and instead ball didn't quite set up in the right fashion for it. Savitsa here on the right-hand side crosses in towards Martial but here well positioned and I will say this game is very very tentative we've had the opening 20 commanded mostly by Milan the next 10 United have grown into it difficult to see which way the pendulum will swing next and that is it where will it stop when it is all said and done Origi with a shot from distance gets that corner and if you remember that corner and that header from Kier it's that knock on controlled strike they keep going for but yeah quite rightly Kier's already had one sighter for a corner Could potentially have another one here if Raheem Diaz can find the right delivery here it is then flat towards Kier If at first you don't succeed, Wes, try and try again. Solid at the back, now turned goal scorer. Kier for Milan, puts them up 1-0. That's a double dinger from where I come from, off the bar twice. And again, as you said, it was just the way it was lined up. You'll see it again here. Off the once, off again, back into the back of the net. Wonderful finish from Kier. And that gives AC Milan the foothold that they desperately needed. As you'd expect from Cecino, Moe's job not finished. Ten minutes to go till half time. Milan won United nil in game three. The Milan storyline just keeps giving and giving. Sabitzer, plenty of time for a cross. Kier, the goal scorer. Able to head that one away. Both men on the stage have been waiting patiently all day to be featured. Now's the time to prove your worth. Five to go until half time. As you can see, both players on the stage within the top ten of the regular season. Goal scoring chance. Bruno Fernandes. Oh, that's great challenge. Vital, vital from Tamori. There will be one they try it again. Time. Rashford can't find his man. With one minute added on, looks like the first half will end with Milan in the lead. And that is the case. First 45 in the books. AC Milan. 45 minutes away from the eFootball Championship Pro 2023 final. Regardless of what happens in this game three, what a story we've seen from them this season. Yeah, they have been value for it. They very much have been AC Milan. Highs and the lows this club has delivered. That's a long ball towards Rashford. Heads it back to Martial. Great finish. What a goal. Game on. Milan won, United won. And that extra pass to set up the finish sets us up now in this second half. What a ball. Great crossfield ball again. Rashford knocking that down. Martial, first time strike, knows that he had players coming to close him down. And it's Martial on the volley, passes it into the back of the net. And leave it to be the most experienced man 
in the Manchester United ranks to be the guy that pulls this back around for his team. It's Lotfi, converts his equaliser. It's as you work. These two clubs proving incredibly difficult to split. for United finds Rashford nice idea to try and feed Sabitzer there but too close to Mike Pena oh that's a mistake now Rashford's through Rashford's through and Rashford scores Unbelievable turnaround from Manchester United. Now they're in the driver's seat. Let it never be understated just how much the, that Marcus Rashford card has changed the season and complexion for Manchester United. Having that additional boost from the big time card. As you'll see it again there. It's, it's you know thievery from Anthony Martial and from Lotfi. He realised where it was going. The keeper cannot keep that out. We've seen it already today with Aaron Ramsdale, couldn't keep one out. Mainan does the exact same. Poor Sassino now having to play on the back foot. As that goal near enough on the hour mark makes it United 2, Milan 1. Sonali, Diaz. Revic looking for Origi. Lotfi doing the business so far. Substitution in progress. Oh, that's very dangerous. And now Martial on the D. Oh, it's three. It's a goal that gives them a two goal cushion in the semi final. It's a mistake at the back from Kalulu solid for most of the season but Martial pounces and from inside the D puts Lotfi two to the good yeah, it's an instinctive finish from Lotfi there as well uh, you know we certainly could we certainly have seen before players in that position making extra passes making extra strides he said he says nope gonna take one touch gonna hit it and finds the corner of the net and now 65 at the clock here, 3-1 at the oh, moment. Well, Revic is, is 3-2! Oh, Game on! Straight away, the immediate reply. We need to remember our own advice, Wes. <laughs> Milan just don't give up. Yeah, you, you can't count them out. Brilliant, well worked the ball. And well worked ball into the box there for Revic to... Take that on and find it into the top corner. Brilliant finish from Cicinho. His team urging him to calm down now and get himself back to settled. It's very hard to go back to neutral. We're now underway. United 3, Milan 2. Plenty of time in the second half. Manchester United, you've just got to keep the clock ticking. Will be the happier of the two clubs in this position, but Sassino. 
Sassino believes. Benacer, Liao, Divock Origi, Adli back towards Origi and well he's gone flying there. The referee unmoved. Benacer to Origi. Fred tried to line up that working. strike. So Manchester United will be well aware of the game plan from AC Milan. They have seen that knock-on controlled strike enough times to know when it is on. They know that they need to get out to them. You can see the horse has been queued in the top right-hand corner. Ten in-game minutes remain. United want to make certain with Rashford. Three. Martial. Sabitzer! United for Milan 2. It's times like this I wish I spoke French. It's times like this I really did. Again, it just wriggled free of the defender. Rashford just managed to retain the ball. It's one touch passing. Goalkeeper is left flat footed. Does he get across his goal? That's a bit uh, as I do one of the easiest tap ins you're ever likely to see. I think the only word I know from that is a lay. <laughs> you can see what it means to them. For Sassino. He's not out of it. He's not out of it yet. If we saw what happened with 3-1. If he can replicate that and, and put some fear back in at 4-3. Could be in for a grandstand finish. So so difficult to try and describe the roller coaster of emotions of this semi-final. After an emphatic win in game one, AC Milan looked the favourites to go through. They certainly did. They looked like they had the box seat. They looked like they were the most in control. They looked at the match at the match one, and instead. Kills you and Lotfi both come along and went, no, no, we're going to upset the apple cart here and we're going to completely turn this game on its head. Of course, some last words from Manchester United. Just analysing the way Milan are setting up for this final... Field. Ten. Number eight. Less than Bruno minutes. Benazes. We need two goals from Milan Number if the 15. dance is to continue. Sabitzer. But Fred, that is a vital, Coming vital tackle. Field. And Martial Number is five. almost through, but for Kalulu. Number 25. Jaden Santo. McTominay straight towards place. that corner flag. Possessed by Krunic. Milan trail by two. Liao. Origi just lost his footing there for a moment. Liao. Origi just lost his footing there for a moment. Sancho. Anyway, will do. Rashford will give chase and he might just get there, you know. He does on the near side, and this is ticking time off of the clock all the while. And I think United have done it. Four, added minutes, has Four been minutes added on. Still he bounds as well. But all of these minutes are being ticked off. And I think Rashford's even won himself a free kick here. It's been a fairy tale season for Milan. But United's resolve at the right time sees them 
just moments away. A mere formality, no doubt. With a battle against Bayern München to be crowned champion. Just need to grind these last few minutes out here. Tonali wins the ball back here for Cicinho, but time is not his friend. Origi will take it out of play, and with only one minute to go, It's been a while since United found themselves in a final of this competition. I have to think back to the Youth Football Cup back in 2020, if memory serves. It's been a lot of football between now and then within this tournament and within this eSports ecosphere. That it has, but with the time ticking over to 94, Milan's season will come to an end and Manchester United will play in the eFootball Championship Pro 2023 final. Lotfi Nexa kills you. They went out and got their team in the off-season and now they're reaping the rewards. Commiserations to AC Milan. They have no doubt become a fan favourite this year with their efforts from match day seven onwards. Thought for a moment it might just sit up for them the dream run after game one of that semi-final. Invited them to go off and go on a storybook run. But the run, unfortunately for them, ends here. Our final is set. Manchester United, after the hard work they've put in this season will play in the eFootball Championship Pro Final. Semra, don't ask me to describe that game. Couldn't tell you because it was a cacophony of emotions, goals, thrills, spills across games one, two and three. But in the end, all I know, the only thing that makes sense is United are in the final. OK, I won't ask you what happened, Bon, but what <laughs> I will say is that Wiz mentioned it earlier, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if you go all the way back to match day one, you talk about the Milanese miracle. They were on their maiden campaign and they viewed in the perfect way possible with nine points from nine. They've made it all the way through uh, to the knockout stages, just barely, however, making sure that they book the final place to today at the last minute, having to do so by picking up another hat-trick of wins against Arsenal. They've reached the semi-finals. It was a brand new club, new faces as well. Wes was saying, at what point do we put some respect on the name? And I think now is as good a time as any to do so because it really is a remarkable run that they have had. And you look at Manchester United, you have to remember how they started out this campaign. It was disastrous for them and going into the season, we all saw them as one of the big favourites to really challenge for the title. And today was another reason as to why they have shown us to be the case. And of course, they also finished second, didn't they, in the regular season as well. So they managed to come straight into the final four just at the right time. They're just revving up their engines. So it'll be fascinating to see how that Titanic clash goes down against Bayern München, who have made life a little bit more difficult for themselves having had to play the quarterfinals as well. But I believe Wiz is now ready to go and fire some questions in the mix zone. So let's hand things over to him for a moment. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'm here with Lotfi, first of all, congratulations. You can see that that's taken a little bit out of you in terms of your energy level. You seem a little bit flat. Was that a tough game for you guys? Yeah, for sure. It's the high level. It's a semi-final of the eFootball Championship Pro. So all the games are very hard. Uh, the tension is here because if you lose, if you lose, you you go to home. So yeah, it was very hard games, very good opponent. Congrats to Milan because they played very well. But now focus on uh, the most important part of the season, the final, and we stay focused. We try to not be too much happy because the target is the, is the final. So yeah, well you certainly made the final. Of course, you know who you're up against in terms of FC Bayern Munich. You've got a tiny bit of time before the game kicks off to try and mentally reset. And, and talk about a little bit about your teammates and about you know the fact that the first game against 
Uh, against AC Milan, you guys lost, but you managed to come back and repair yourselves and get yourselves back into that mode of being able to compete. Um, talk to them about talk, talk about their mentality. I think we have a very good mentality. Uh, we we know if if one loses, the two other wins. So it's important we are really a team. Uh, so I think we have a very good mentality. We are very focused on this playoffs. Uh, we know how how to to keep the pressure to to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, in terms of mentality, I think we we are on our our area. Uh, so yeah, let, let's see now the final, but. For the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy of our mentality. We are very together. Yep, and no, that's good. It's the most important thing. That's good. And one final thing. I'm going to ask you a cheeky question now. Do you think you can beat Bayern Munich? We can do it. We can do it for sure. If we can't do it, it's better to don't, to don't play and to go at home. Or I will lose, lose my time. Uh, we can do it, but it, it will be very hard for sure. It's a very big team. They are in the final, so... For sure, they beat FC Barcelona, who is very, very strong. But yeah, it will be tough, it will be close for sure. We will need the bit of luck that a champion needs. So yeah, we will do the maximum to to make proud the Manchester United. We want this title for this club who who deserve a lot. And so now let's see, we, we focus and let's see what happens. Well, fantastic. Well, it's great to hear from you. Good luck. Go and get yourself ready. Uh, guys, back to you on the desk.